Thank you, dear Lord, for another beautiful Sunday to come and worship. And great to hear Thank you that we're able to be here. And have a good time. And, and, and absorb the blessings of the service and the love of the fellowship. Yes, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for thank you, Lord, for letting us be a part of this this service. Pray, Lord, that you'll bless the remainder of the service and the message and the messages and every word of truth that is presented here, Lord. Help us to absorb it into our being so we can serve you in the right way and think in the right way and walk in the right way. Lord, help us. Yes, Jesus. Because without your help, Lord, we all fail. In Jesus' name we pray and give thanks that you have blessed this service already. Yes, Lord, yes. we pray that you'll just lift everyone up. Yes, God. The cures of sickness and health failures and all the things that goes with life. And help us to see your salvation and grace standing there Amen. in its glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you, brother. If you have your Bible with you today, we are going to go to the book of Isaiah, chapter 12. Isaiah chapter 12, I'll give you a few moments to get there. Uh, I am thankful today for God's mercies. Amen. Had God not have had mercy upon us, uh, we wouldn't have what we have today. <coughs> but uh, God had mercy on us, and uh, he gave us an opportunity Today, that only God could give. Amen. And he gave us the only gift that only God can give, and that was his son Jesus yes. to come and die for us today. And so I am very thankful for all that God has done for me and my family and yes. for all of you and your family today. Isaiah chapter 12 verse 1 says, And in that day thou shalt say, O Lord, I will praise thee, though thou wast angry with me. Thine anger is turned away, and thou comfortest me. Behold, God is my salvation. I will trust and not be afraid, for the Lord Jehovah is my strength and my song. He also is become my salvation. Therefore, with joy shall you draw water out of the wells of salvation. And in that day shall you say, Praise the Lord. Call upon his name. Declare his doings among the people. Make mention that his name is exalted. Sing unto the Lord, for he hath done excellent things. This is known in all the earth. Cry out and shout, Thou inhabitants of Zion, for great is the Holy One of Israel in the midst of thee. Thank you for standing to the reading of God's Word. Now, brothers and sisters, we've got something today because of what God has done here. There wasn't always hope for you and I, but there is hope now because of God's mercies and of God's love yes. wherein he sent the best that heaven had uh, to offer, the best that there was when he gave you and I uh, Jesus. So we need to be thankful uh, for God's mercies. The Lord had mercy upon me before I ever come to know him. He delivered me from all kinds of situations before I was even a Christian. And then when I give my heart and life to the Lord, God's mercies meant something to me. It's time that uh, Christian people, brother, it's time for us to realize what's important to us and what's not important. Yes. The very important and the most important thing is that Christians realize who God is and what God has done and what God is going to do. Amen. And when we need realize that, uh, 
be thankful for our salvation. The Bible said for us to be thankful. Brother, salvation is not just a word that someone wrote down. Brother, salvation is what uh, come to you and I when we give our lives to Jesus and we surrender to him. Salvation come to us. Uh, what is salvation? Salvation is meant that we are being set free. We have been set free from the world that we was living in. Oh, yes. oh yeah, we're still here. We're still walking around. But I'll sit you met Jesus, you're not the same as you was. Brother, they was something happened to you. I can't explain it, but brother, in a split second, uh, my life changed. Uh, everything about me changed. Uh, I'm not the same guy I used to be. Huh? Uh, brother, I got delivered and I know who done it. Uh, it wasn't a preacher. It wasn't a church house. It wasn't nobody else. It was Jesus. Uh, brother, that delivered me and forgave me of my sins. And so therefore we need to be thankful for our salvation. And we need to praise God for his goodness. Have you told God and thanked God this morning like yesterday, the day before? Have you said, God, thank you for your goodness. Thank you, God, for being so good to me. And Lord, you're good to me even when I'm bad. You're good to me when I'm out of line. God, Salvation. 
Let me tell you something. You better protect that salvation because I tell you right now, it's not yours. Mm -hmm. It's not yours. God lets us enjoy it. God lets us feel it. But I'll tell you what, it's God's salvation. Yeah. It's God's. But we strut around like, it, oh man, there ain't nobody as salvation as I am. There ain't nobody as all this time. Without Jesus, we're nothing. Right. Amen. Right. So jump off your little pedestal. Mm -hmm. Jump right on off of there because we're nothing without God. That's right. Right. Absolutely nothing. The Bible says to love the gospel. Love it. Love the gospel. And mean it. Preach the gospel. Preach the gospel. I was out doing some banking. The church is banking the other day, a while back. And the, the gal that takes care of that was back there and she's talking. We got talking about church and, and talking. And she said, well, I want to know where it's at and all this. And I said, we well, telling her. Well, when I was in there and we was talking, she said, uh, well, how long have you been there, Pastor? And I said, I believe it's somewhere around 37 years. She said, do you preach a different message every Sunday? I said, well, yes, I do. She said, that's impressive. See, people don't understand. Let me tell you something. Brother Austin and Don and them know what I'm talking about. I can preach you John 3, 16 for the next six months, and it's something new. Amen. This book is brand new every day. Mm -hmm. Amen. The stories in here are different, but the Word of God is the same. Yeah. Amen. It never changes. You can preach it and preach it and preach it. I was going to preach a brother told me one time, he said, you know what? He said, I preach every, every, I believe every chapter in this Bible. <laughs> He said, well, Lord, what are we going to do now? He said, preach it again. Yeah. <laughs> Take that testimony that you've got and preach it again. Uh -huh. Share it again. Talk about Jesus. And I'll tell you what, every time you do, it'll be different. Yeah. Amen. But it's the same word. Yeah. Listen, that's what we need to do is to preach the gospel. There's too many that's running away from it. A, a friend of ours, when we down south, we went to, to visit them, and uh, we got to talking about church, and, and the old fellow there, you know, I just love him, I get back down, I'm going to see him again. Listen, we, he got to talking, and I guess where he went to church, he got upset at him. So he went out and sat in the foyer. And he said, when they come out, some of them, he said, listen, he said, do you want a, uh, a church? And a pastor that's got holes in his Bible, or do you want to you want to serve the whole Bible? That makes some good sense to this old boy. I'm going to tell you right now: there's too many preachers preaching, and their whole their Bible is full of holes. It's full of holes, brother. It's time for them to cork up them holes and start preaching the whole word. And brother, quit stepping over it. Could, you know, it's time for God's word. I'll tell you right now, the Bible says, you add to this book or you take away from it, I'll take away your part out of the Lamb's book of life. Yeah. Uh, they better be cautious. Yeah. They better be cautious. Well, we got to go on. But we got to preach the word. We got to be committed to it. If the word tells me I can't do it this week, it's the same next week. And the week after that, if the word says no, it means no. Amen. It don't mean how, how I feel about it. It don't mean about how somebody else is living. Brother, if God says no, it's no. Amen. And too many times, you know, we try to get around it like we used to our mom and daddies. When mom would say no, this old boy had a, I, had, I already had it figured out how I could get around that. But I'll tell you what, when you try to God, you'll lose. Yeah. 
I lost his mama too. <laughs> Be committed to the word. And the Bible says, with joy, with joy, we can draw from the well of God. We can draw water out of the well of salvation, the Bible says. Now, now, hang on, because right here, if I don't upset you, I'm going to try my best to. But I'm going to preach you the truth. Now the mouth says that we can draw water out of the well of salvation. And then when I read that, my heart and mind went back to a place called Samaria. And the Bible said there was a woman coming to the well to get water. And Jesus, as they went along, he said, it must needs be that I go to Samaria. He knew that person was coming to that well so he went over and here come this woman to the well she had her water pots Jesus asked her why she was there and they began to talk she said I've come to get water but I have no way to get it out I can't get it out now hang on it gets better after this well for some it'll get better she, could, she didn't have no way to draw water out of that well. You know why? First of all, when she come to that well with her water pots, we know they were empty. You know, there's a lot of hearts come to the church house this morning, and their hearts and spirits is as empty as them water pots. You hear me? Was empty as them water pots. And brother, they come to the house of God and they want to drink of salvation and they can't get it. You know why? Because they ain't got nothing to draw it with. If you want something out of the wells of salvation, brother, you got to have a Holy Spirit rope in here, uh, brother, that will go down and he will take it uh, and break it up out of there. But you know, most church people today, they're as dry as them water pots that lady would carry to the well. Jesus said, why don't you let me me give you a drink of water. He said, I'll give you a drink of water if you won't thirst anymore. Listen to me today, brothers and sisters. Let's get our hearts right with God. Let's get a right spirit within us. So when we go to the well of salvation, praise God, that, that Holy Spirit will draw him up out of there. And brother, we can be happy. We can go and shout the words of victory because next time, there's too many dull people today trying to worship God without the Holy Spirit. Brother, the Holy Spirit is what worships God. That's what woke me up this morning. That's what choking right now. That's what brought me here. It's the Holy Spirit of God. That brother, it's not me. It's not you. It's Christ Jesus. Oh, yeah. It's Jesus, the well of salvation. But we're like that woman. Brother, her pots were empty, empty of salvation. There's too many people today. They are churchy, but they're empty of salvation. Mm. Empty of salvation. Well, what are you saying, preacher? I'm saying, if you haven't been born again, you're empty of salvation. If you didn't come here with the Spirit of God this morning in your life, you are empty of salvation. If you come here this morning for any other reason, to serve God and bow ourselves down to Almighty. Oh, listen, if we come for any other reason but to worship God, we are empty of salvation. And don't run to the church house and try to get it. You had it before you come through that door. Right. Or you need to come up here at this altar and pray and ask God to have mercy upon you. Oh, God, have mercy upon me. I walked through them doors and I didn't have any spirit. I didn't have any Holy Spirit. And when I come through them doors, brother, if you didn't have it when you come through the doors, you don't have it now. And the only way to get it is right here. Uh-huh. It's the only way to get it. Right here. Empty. Empty of the Spirit. Empty of the Spirit. 
You know what happens to people who try to be Christians and they're empty of spirit and empty of salvation? You can't lead nobody to Jesus. Now I'm going to say something right now and it's probably going to bother you. It may bother you. When you meet up with somebody and you begin to talk to them and talking about the Lord and stuff, and if you've been a Christian in any length of time, don't start hollering for the preacher. Now you listen to me. Too many times somebody says, well, what about this? What about that? I, I, I talk to the preacher. Now I'm going to tell you right now, if you've got salvation and the swear of God in your heart and life, you know how you got it. And you know what it done to you. You know how it changed your life. That's what you need to share with them. Don't holler for the preacher. You ain't getting off the hook in here that easy. Man, I'm going to tell you one thing. If you read that Bible, if you studied that Bible, and if you've been a Christian any length of time, you share Jesus with them. You tell them about Jesus. The Bible says for us to exalt him. Exalt him up. Talk about him. Let people know who Jesus is. He's not just a name. He's Almighty God. He's the Holy Spirit of God. He is the Son of God. He is Jehovah. Listen to me today. He is God. And we need to exalt him. And let the world know how we become to be who we are. I had nothing to do with my salvation except repentance. Amen. I repented and I asked God to have mercy upon me and to forgive me of my sins. Brother, there, there's some that will say there's many avenues to heaven. The Bible says that there's only one. And Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. Amen. No one, no one has come unto the Father except by me. He didn't say no one come to the Father by many avenues. He said, I'm the way. But you see, people want one of them. They want one of them powder puff religions to where, you know, they can just live any way they want to and run into the church house on Sunday morning and worship empty as them water pots that that lady called brought to the well. Amen. Yeah, you can't worship God that way. You have to know who you're worshiping. You have to feel. You know what? If you don't feel God, God inside your heart and spirit when you come to worship, you ain't worshiping. Mm -hmm. yeah. You're just here. But when you come and you have that Holy Spirit, yeah, you feel that Lord. Holy Spirit, boy, I tell you what, and you and it means something to you. Boy, Calvary means that. They said, let's don't talk about Calvary, the blood, the cross, and all that. That's far away stuff. No, I'm going to tell you what, it's nearer than they think. Mm -hmm. It's a lot more nearer than they think. I'll tell you right now, the cross of Calvary will never disappear. The blood of Jesus will never disappear. Brother, the, the crucifixion will never disappear. The risen Savior will never disappear. Amen. Because when Jesus died there, he said, Father, it's finished. And brother, he signed, sealed, and delivered the word of God to you and I. Now, what are we going to do with it? What are we going to do with it? Are we just going to sit back and just kind of like thinking everything's going to be No, we'll be empty. Empty of spirit, empty of prayer. I've had people say something. Preacher, I just wanted to get up and to just say something. Well, why didn't they? If you'd had the Holy Spirit in you the way you ought to have had it, you'd have done it. Uh -huh. Couldn't help yourself. Couldn't help yourself. Listen, a lot of people they they want to go to church and they want to be a part of it. 
but they just never experienced the change. Never experienced the change. There has to be a change in our life. We have to experience that. You know, I mean, you know, somebody can just say, well, you know, there has to be that change come over and into our lives. You know, uh, I mean, it's a great testimony to share with someone what God has delivered you from. And that might be their situation. They might have been trying to get away from that. And you begin to share with them, this is what God done for me. Well, if he done it for him, maybe he can do it for me. You see, we didn't, we didn't just walk in this church house squeaky clean. No, we just didn't walk in there squeaky clean. I walked in the church house and I was playing out the worst sinner that ever come out of the hills of Tennessee. We won't go no farther there. But brothers and sisters, uh, we need to look different, act different, talk different. Well, hang on, you know. People run around. They'll talk about Christianity. They'll talk about the church. They'll talk about this. They, they talk different, but not <coughs> totally. The first thing you know, them little curse words just flying out of their mouth. Come on. It's time to be Christians. Be what God wants us to be because God made a way. He's the God of our salvation. The Bible says, I will trust and not be afraid. Amen. Not be afraid. Well, I'll tell you, for the Lord Jehovah is my strength and my song. It all belongs to God. He also has, has become my salvation. Therefore, with joy shall we draw water out of the wells of salvation. And boy, it is joyous. When, you, when you're serving God in the spirit and truth, and then when the Lord draws you a good, holy drink of water. And brother, I'm going to tell you what, it is joy. Joy coming out of that old spring or out of that old well. I used to carry water out of an old spring in a bucket. Amen. And I know exactly what that tastes like. Go out there and dip that old bucket in that spring, and it was cold. It was cold. Mess of water. You know any more black lizards? If they wasn't in that spring, I wouldn't drink it. I'm serious. I'm serious. Uh -huh. They said if the little black lizards are not in that water, don't drink it. Because they'll only stay for it's pure. Now that's a that's that's some hillbilly knowledge right there. <laughs> and I want to tell you what, they're in there. They're in there. And if we, and if they if they was that good in that pure water, I should have drunk some of them. Well, we need to speak about the great things that God has done in our lives and not be ashamed to do it. Be bold. Be bold. Don't be a fanatic. I'm not into fanatics, but I'm into real Christians. Yes. Amen. Real Christians. Be bold. Be excited. Uh, and rejoice and live in the Savior's love. And God will greatly use you. He will greatly bless you. But the main thing, let's be thankful for God's mercies. Amen. Amen. Yes. Thankful for God's mercies. And, uh, and if we'll talk and uh, lift up and exalt God, share Jesus with people, mm -hmm. there'll be people coming through those doors. That's right. But here's what we do. Lord, please, how people come to our church. 
I'm going to tell you something right now. You're wasting your time. You're wasting your time and you're wasting God's time. Now, I'm not saying God could cram this church to capacity. But that's what he's got us for. That's, right. that's what he saved us for. Is to share his word. So, if we want the church to grow, share the word. Well, who do I tell? Anybody that'll listen to you. Anybody that'll listen to you. Share Jesus. Don't push it on. Share it. And the Lord will bless you, and we'll see people come to the house of God. Because I'm going to tell you, even in uh, 2024, people still got problems, and they're still looking for a way out. And I'm going to tell you, they're not going to find it. They're not going to find it outside of the church in Jesus. Amen. So, invite them to the house of the Lord. Yes. And I tell you, I believe if they'll come, they'll like it. Yes. They'll like it. But I appreciate you being here today. And I want to know what is needful in your life uh -huh. to put you in a place where that you ought to be with God. Do you, do you appreciate the mercies of God? Do you love God like that we should love God? Do we have that right spirit within us? I mean, man, I, you know, you know, just as well as I would know. I would know. Right here is a place to, whatever your need is, God can fix it. Amen. He can fix it. All we got to do is come and ask him. Come and ask him. Say, Lord, this is my need. God, could you help me with this? And if you do that, the Lord will bless you. Let us stand. This altar is open.